All right, welcome back to the show. The time has come. We have a bender and we have our fret wire out here. We are ready to do the bending. So I'm pretty sure I have this already set for the 12 inch radius. Should just be a simple matter of running it through. How'd that do? Almost perfect. I can deal with that. Um, I'm gonna run it through once more. That should finish that bend off pretty well. Just like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bend two of these and I had some left over from the 335. So I'm gonna bend just two and uh, any extras that I require. I may not need any requ any extra. I have that, so. And we'll just, uh, there we go. All that for that. <laughs> Let's get this uh, wire installed, shall we? Okay, it is time to begin the fret sizing, which is always fun. So I have one from a previous little offcut bit that actually I'll just find the one that fits. Probably the 12, 13, maybe we can go 14. Yeah, we can go 14, maybe 15. I think 15 would be fine but I'll do 14 to make sure there's enough tang there, yeah. Yeah, if I do it right, I can get it that way with the 15. Okay, so there's that. Um, so I'm gonna take the two full ones here and start with those. Um, and there's always this little flat bit where the radiusing, the, the bender did not get. So I'm gonna clip that off. Ugh. It's hard to do. I don't have a very strong grip, apparently. Okay, so what you do is you start with the long ones first because if you screw up and make it too short, there's free open short ones available that you can use. And I'm gonna see if I can use the end nipper instead here. Not sure how long or how strong of a grip I will need to do that, but I put my nick in it. I know that's too much. It's too hard to just try to hang on to it well enough to do a nice snick. It does not want to cut. Okay, well, we got one. And I'm leaving them about, oh, an eighth long total, basically about a sixteenth on either end, um, so that I can file them. The idea is, one of the things I want to do is make sure that there's enough tang sticking out that once it's driven in and I file it flush, it fills the entire slot as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to have, the thing that's annoying on this is that when you do this cut, it will bevel the crap out of that first out of one side versus the other. So if I just hold it in there, take this and stick it right up against it with a little bit of room. And just grip it. I need to use some bigger cutters because I have no leverage with those little guys and I have very little grip because I'm not a very strong man. So let's make sure that, oh, that one stays where it goes. And we just keep on doing that until I've got them all cut to the right length. It might be a little, a little bit short for now. It's all right. It's actually fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna grab some larger ones, and because uh, that's just really tough to grip. So I'm gonna grab some bigger ones, and we're gonna go after this. Now we got them all cut to rough length, and now I want to just sort of keep track of them. So we'll go 
throw them all into this block with these holes in the order they go in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, 15, 16, 17, so just like that. In fact, I'm going to move them forward because I'll be using them, I'll working on them from the front, from the short end down. Like so, and I'm going to move this one so that I don't confuse it for a good one. My extra. I didn't need any of the other remaining stuff, so that worked out well. I used up just enough stock here. Send them all in here. And then I can work out the application strategy. So applying them goes really fast. It's it's actually kind of frightening how quickly it can go. This, getting them in is easy. Um, I have a tiny small concern, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm a little bit worried about the saw that I used for deepening the slots might have been a little wide. I'm worried that it might have widened the slots a bit, but I don't think it did. I think it's okay. So, All right, so we just got our hammer. We're just going to do the mallet method, but I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to check my fretboard for straight and get it as straight as I can. Right now, it's dropping off down that way a bit. So we're going to take the, take a tiny tweak, take a tiny tweak of the, take a tiny tweak of the trust rod. I think, tighten, no, this way. Let's have a look at what it did to that. Pretty good, right to that point. I'm going to have drop off there no matter what, I think. Let's get a little bit more. So we get, okay, yeah, we're starting to get a little bit of a bow there, but that's okay. I'm going to call that pretty good for the moment. And then we'll, we'll uh, start popping them in there. Okay, so that's pretty straight. Any more polishing I want to do before we uh, call this thing done? I'm going to grab my, my micro mesh pads here real quick and just, because this is going to be the easiest chance to do this rather than later. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to start back at 8,000. I'm literally just going to give it a quick once pass here. Okay. Now we can call that ready for frets there's no more stalling all right so i'm gonna get positioned i'm gonna work out my best position here yeah i think i might like it like that for the moment let's see um, and we'll get ready to do it all right there's no more stalling available we are fretting this damn thing now um, so i've done this in the previous video too the 335 video where I've just demonstrated this. So what we take is the first fret, and it's radius slightly tighter than the actual radius, so that I can tip it down. So I take the hammer. I think I've got a pretty, yeah, that's a reasonably robust face. That's the one I fretted with before. And it goes, and I tap the ends in, and I tap this end in. Now I can tap in the middle. And that helps spread the tang sideways. And that seats everything nicely. I need to press it a little harder in the middle here. I think I want a harder surface this time. Yeah, I think that surface, the, let me try the red. Might just be too squishy. Now I'm gonna swap, swap this out for a slightly harder mallet head because I don't want it giving and it, it seats nicely, it's just got to seat harder. So anyway, that is, fret one is in place, basically. Right, we got ourselves a slightly harder head on this end of the mallet here. Let me just tap it in better. And I just sight down and make sure it's seated nicely enough. Looks good. And it does appear my slots are slightly deeper than they needed to be, but that's all right. Let's see if I 
No, oh, can't get a fingernail underneath it, so it's good. Yeah, we're good. I think I'm going to turn a, a brass head for this, for this specific task. But fret number one is in. It appears that my slots are fine. They're holding just fine, so not too worried about it at all now. The slots are wide enough, or the the slots are the right width. Green. Okay, let's try to get one side in good. Get the other side in good. Center. That's pretty good. And I can't get under it, so that's a good sign. That's seated pretty well. We're seating well, and I'm noticing where the inlay goes is where I was hoping for it to be. I like where it is. Um, I wanted it close to the fret, so and it doesn't overlap, so it's good. We just keep on going here. This is about to become the repetitive part of this task. So the frets are in, which is great. Um, one thing I want to double check, so once the frets go in, they tend to push stuff out and that sort of warps. So I have a feeling I'm going to check the fretboard only for straightness first. So I want the fretboard straight before I get the frets straight because otherwise you take off more of the fret than you really need to. So I don't have a notched straight edge, so I don't have a fancy dancy way to check it for straight. So I have this little solution. I have these parallels because I have machining tools too, metalworking tools. So these parallels, they're all exactly the same thickness. And they're skinny enough that I can fit one right over the 14th fret area. And then I can fit one down here on this end. And then a third one that is the exact same thickness can come somewhere in the middle. If the fretboard is straight, I'll have contact on all three points. If it's not, we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to drop downhill and have a peek with my straight edge. I am expecting a belly in the middle. I got no belly. Wow. Okay, so things did not expand, which is great. I'm fine with that. I'm actually getting full contact on all three. So as far as I can tell, as far as I can measure, my, my, my fretboard is as straight as I can get it. So that's good. That means all I really have to do is flatten the tops of the frets after I cut the ends off. I'm going to take care of the ends first because those are little jabby bastards and they hurt. So I'm going to get set up in the vise and uh, we'll get these things filed straight. Filed flush, I should say. All right, so I'm not going to flatten the tops until it's mounted because when the fretboard is put on, it's going to move a little bit over here and there's no point flattening this whole thing out and putting in a drop off then putting it in and then having that lift. So I'm going to get it mounted. But what I can do is get these really sharp, dangerous edges taken care of. And I've just got 80 grit on a block. I could use a file just as well, but 80 grit on a block works well as well. And I'm going to just get rid of these things here. The trick is to lead with a lift it up. Try not to. I may just do this with a file. Maybe the sandpaper was a bad idea. Forget that. We're going to get a stinking file. Hang on a second. Let's go with my fast file here. So we just. As long as we're spanning more than one, this will go rapidly. Yes, there are little jigs you can use that 
will file this to a specific angle and all sorts of stuff. And they are useful, and I will get to them, but not yet. First, I'm just getting all the waste off. I'm checking each end to make sure that it's fully seated as well while I'm at it. As long as I'm spanning more than one fret, this is a perfectly safe function. Try to get that lowest one last. I'm also trying to push the frets down, not pull them up with my motions. That's why I switched. This doesn't take very long at all. This will be done in five minutes. Sorry, um, right in, uh, the 45 degree angle file. Everything's flush on the sides. Now we're just getting things beveled on the ends. And it just bevels the ends of the fret about a 45 degree angle. And it doesn't take but a couple of passes for each one. And you stop before you hit wood, just before you hit wood. Good. All right. Now, that I think is about as far as I want to take it right now. I'm going to double check you for flushness. No, you are not flush. But we can just take care of beveling you too. Just fine. Like that. Easy peasy, okay. Now, that's as far as I'm gonna take the frets until the neck is glued on, because I've got a bit of a burr there I wanna take care of. Hold on a sec. There we go. So that is about as far as I wanna take the frets at this point, because the next step will be to flatten and level them, and I wanna get the neck on the guitar before I uh, attempt that. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, stop for a bit, take a break, and uh, give it some thinking. Decide whether I'm going to do what I, what else I need to do before I put the neck on. Because there's a lot of other things I might be able to do, uh, like drill for the tuning machines and stuff. So I'm just working through my process now. But all in all fretted. It's very nice. Um, and the frets aren't that off as far as flat goes either. Minus this little down. I mean, they are pretty uniform, which is good. This one might be a bit low, but you know, so that's, that's where we are. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll bring you back for the next step, whatever that. All right. So welcome back to the shop. It's been a few, it's been a while. I keep taking breaks. Um, yeah. So uh, I've decided finally what to do about my headstock inlay. I have decided I will do one. Um, I think I'll do my signature across the top, kind of like I did on the 335 with Eric Clapton signature. I'll do my, I have a signature that I use on my, you've seen it with the branding iron. Basically put that here, um, I'm thinking as a, as a curly maple inlay. This is a pretty piece of pretty curly piece of maple that I think I can make use of here. Um, it'll be a V inlay. Uh, I'm thinking and trying to do a V inlay here across the top. But in order to do that, I need to hold the headstock a certain way. I need to hold it flat. So basically, I need it like that, essentially, where the headstock sits flat against the table. 
like this, and then I can overhang off to the side. I'll do that on the machine. Um, in order to do this, in order to hold it like this, I want to make sure that I am axially, I center line is correct, so otherwise this will end up tilted. Um, so I want to, what I'm doing now is I've drawn up a fixture that will grab, that will have some posts for these uh, six peg holes. Um, and I'm going to try to cut a, tr cut a fixture on the CNC and leave it there because that'll make sure that the, my um, X axis is aligned and this will be along my X axis. So um, I'm going to head over to the CNC. This fixture might take some trial and error and I'm I'll be honest, I'm kind of tired of filming trial and errors on fixtures and jigs. I just want to get this guitar done. I am starting to feel a little project fatigue, so I'd like to get it done. And we're close, so um, I'm going to just go after this fixture until I reach success, and then I'll show you what that fixture was. Um, I might film some of the actual footage or some of the actual process of making that fixture, but I'm not going to do a lot of talking at this point. I'm just going to get after it. So that might be the new catchphrase, get after it. I say that a lot, don't I? Uh, that's a shout out to Phil. All right, I think I've got a fixture that'll work. Um, I shot a few bits of footage. I don't know how much of it I'll keep in, but I tried MDF, but these little pegs sheared off. This is Baltic Birch and it's holding fine, um, but I don't know that they're that strong. If I needed it more permanently, I would have probably done a platen with holes and then made some aluminum pins for, for locating or steel or brass or something, but this is holding fine. Um, and I was able to put my template in and do a, a quick check on the carve and I think it's going to be good. It's going to be real skinny, but it's going to be good. Um, but while I've got this center line already in the machine, there's really no point in having to refine it again later. So I'm going to put the real headstock in right now and it's just being held on with some double stick tape right now. And I'm not certain if it's going to be enough, but we're going to give it a go here. I'm going to give this thing a bit of a tap with a hammer, with a mallet here real quick. Some stuff out of the way. I just want to make sure that it is reasonably well fastened. It's not going anywhere. I might not need a hammer, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. That'll do fine. We are well and truly held. There's a strip of double stick tape down the middle of this. Now, one of the things I want to do, I've already got my zero spot, my X and Y zero done, but I don't have my Z for this thickness. So I'm going to reset my Z to zero where it is so it won't drop. I'm going to go back to this zero. Okay, that should be three quarters of an inch from the end of the bod of the head headstock. Now we're going to very carefully try to locate my zero for this. Okay. Go. I'm just going after it. This is a one-time shot, one-shot deal. We don't have, if I screw this up, I'm peeling that headstock plate off and making another one. Still got some room yet here. Getting closer. Getting there. And we'll just get it zeroed here. Oop, too far. Still too far. Go one, two. Yeah, it's close there. There we go. And then we can say one, two, three. And call that the Z zero. And now I'm just going to run this. It literally takes like a minute to run. Or two, maybe. And uh, no dust collection. The double stick tape's holding it. As long as it doesn't peel up, we're going to be fine. And it shouldn't because the locating pins are keeping that from happening. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's good. Okay. So we're going to call it good and we're going to run it. So here goes.
Okay, that literally is it. That was all it took. Like 30 seconds, maybe a minute. 28 seconds. <laughs> all right, so now I can peel this off of there carefully. And I'll show you what we ended up with. See, this was worked out beautiful. That's the last, that, that fixture lasted exactly long enough. There's one of the pieces, the pegs, the locating pins fell off or came apart. So that is exactly enough. So there's our carving. Now we can work on the inlay bit independent and I don't have to worry about losing my zero now. Um, so I'm going to try that next. I'll bring you back. All right. So our test, this will be really tough to see, but I glued in my test piece. Oh, it's not so bad. So that's a bit of, um, actually that's a walnut sapwood into MDF, which is not a great test, but it's a sufficient test. Um, it let me know that I got my depths good. Um, it took a little bit of trial and error. This is like the third or second or third try on the inlay bit, but actually no, it's the first inlay try. Oh no, that's the first. That is the second try on the inlay. Um, anyways, so that's the trial and I've got this in the curly maple. I'm sorry I didn't film that. I should have. But this is the negative that I'm going to use into the headstock. So this should work over here. So I'm just going to wander my way around the bench and double check the fit here real fast. It should be fine because it's the same cut as the last one. Yep, the fit is good. And it sits a little bit proud, which is great. That tells me I'm going to have decent fill, hopefully. Hopefully. And uh, I'm not sure how much of the curl is going to show through, but I'm, my fingers are crossed, so we'll see. Um, so I'm going to take a little glue. I'm going to get myself some clamping ready as well. A little glue, a little brush, and a couple of good-sized skookum clampers. Clampers. And we are set to, uh, to make a mess of this. A little bit of the glue. Yeah, we're going to, we're either going to mess up our headstock right now or make it beautiful. One of the two. It's pretty much how it always goes, I think. You're either going to mess it up or make it beautiful. It's, the only other, other option is not to try. And you got to try. Right? I think so. Says the guy who took three weeks to get to this point. Okay, making sure that I've sufficiently coated every surface beautifully. And I set that here. I've got a call. It'll work beautiful. That will work well. And I gotta turn it so that my I gotta keep my fingers off the because I've got glue all over them. Try not to uh, smudge too much here. There we go. That's working. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in the parrot vise over here. I'm going to run over here and vise this so that I can get the clamps on the way I want them. I'm going to move you guys so you can have a view here. Okay, so we're just clamped up in the parrot vise. Got me a small call. that I can use to apply some pressure with. Should I put a call underneath? Might as well, it won't hurt to do so. Yeah, do that. Okay, let's get like that. I'm gonna try my best to get two on here, but I'm gonna clamp one fairly lightly just to hold all this rud in place. And I can take the second one, come at it from this way. Really gronker. Let's get that on there. Give the vise another snug. That's a lot of weight for the vise to hang on to. And we're good there. I can pull this out of the vise. Stander up. Give the clamps a good cinching. There we go. We're going to let that dry. Hopefully everything is positioned nicely and I can uh, I can really give it a good cleanup. I hope it flush comes out flush. We'll see. All right. 